Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Nuffield Farming Scholarships Trust. I've thoroughly enjoyed my scholarship period. It's taken me down many roads. It's forced me to reevaluate my skills, my competence, occasionally my sanity. A big thank you also to my sponsor, the McRobert Trust, who I'm proud to have rep represented during the last 18 months. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to my family. I'm sure my wife would say I've barely represented them at all over the last 18 months. My introduction to Nuffield came exactly two years ago at the annual conference in Edinburgh. On a visit down to Bartlett's nearby potato factory, I sat, ne sat next to a seasoned Nuffield veteran. Quiet yet engaging, he offered a few words of advice. Give it a try, he said. It's a journey. It could change your life. Incidentally, you were right, Mr. Chairman. Six months later, returning from the New Zealand Contemporary Scholars Conference, and full of enthusiasm, I was intent on introducing a whole raft of new productivity measures to our little pack house. In my haste, however, I hadn't communicated a vision. I'd failed to inspire my team to embrace the necessary change. Within a month, I'd lost all three pack house supervisors. <laughs> it turned out to be more of a revolt than a revolution. <laughs> and not the Nuffield start I'd hoped for. <coughs> Happily, however, it was to prove the catalyst for much positive change. I've grown potatoes and carrots in the north of Scotland for the UK retail scene for some 10 years now. Now, during this time, there's been much rationalisation, where economies of scale and efficiencies have ruled. Retailers have set out their stall as low-cost consumer champions. So this led me to ask the following questions. Is there indeed a future for farm-scale grower packing businesses like ours? And what are the changes I'd need to embrace to develop both personally and professionally to lead my business through the next phase? Are provenance, innovation, and brands even rel relevant to tomorrow's marketplace? And what's the role for social media for our industry? I wanted to consider these questions in differing cultures and different uh, marketplaces. I chose to travel, therefore, to China, to the States, and later in, in Europe, to Spain and Holland. So the Salinas Valley in Northern California is known as the salad bowl of the world. There, I visited a large-scale lettuce operation. At first sight, it was all about scale. 20,000 acres under cultivation and two crops per year. On meeting Brian, Brian Antle here on the right, the third, of, um, the third generation, all three still involved, actively involved in the business, Brian de demonstrated to me that innovation was at the heart of the vision of this business. This slide on the left, over seven years of variety trialling, they had selected varieties all with a similar maturation date, and from this, they had developed an artisan mixed colour lettuce pack, a high premium niche product which is sold throughout Canada and the States. That's it on the, on the left. As the visit came to, to an end, however, I was struck with a, by a throwaway comment as we left their office and headquarters. He said, everyone comes through the front door. And this, for me, underlined the great feeling of self-worth that this business sought to convey amongst its staff from top to bottom. There was a great lesson in how to get the best out of our most valuable resource in our businesses, our people. Bakersfield, Southern California. 80% of the, the US carrot production takes place here. It's dominated by two huge growers. One of these, Grimway Farms, a family-owned business, started by two brothers in the 70s. We visited uh, some harvesting. And nearby, we visited a trial field. Varieties, 
colours are all being assessed with a view to provide newness into a sector, which is quite different from ours in, in the UK and Europe. And this is the point. This product that you can see on the right here was born out of a farmer-led innovation. 20 years ago, the carrot market in the States was much like our own. Carrots grown and consumed as mealtime additions. This innovation by a farmer was born out of a cut and peel process which took specific, very slim varieties, cut into two inch sections, rounded off and took this from mealtime to between meal snacks, which has transformed the US carrot industry. It fits ideally with today's convenience and healthy aspirations of many of our consumers. Equally innovative was the marketing. This sector sought to differentiate the consumer from the purchaser. Often the purchaser, a parent led by these health sort of aspirations, the consumers, however, like our children, our youths, were interested in junk food, perhaps social media. And this particular sector have worked very hard to bring this product into the junk food mentality, putting it into vending schools and schools and colleges and with the use of social media. Now, this is an area in the UK we've barely scratched the surface and I think it's a massive opportunity for our industry. I travelled to China, a country of vast contrast, but I was equally struck by the similarities. As with the US and the EU, food safety is of enormous concern to consumers. The policymakers and the universities we met were almost entirely driven by production and knowledge transfer. In an industry where small-scale and elderly farmers are often poorly educated, there's enormous challenges but the way they're going about these challenges suggests that they will meet them head on. Integrity and trust in the food industry in China was badly shaken back in 2008. Most of us have heard of the milk contamination scandal. Confidence rem remains fragile to this day. In Beijing, we met a group of young professionals who were intent on creating their own farmer's market by selecting and auditing growers. This demonstrated that when confidence and provenance isn't available in the marketplace, people will go out of the way to find it. And if they can't find it, they'll put together a process to deliver it. It underlined to me also the importance of trust in our global food industry. So, back to the questions. I feel the future, the future is bright for farmers in the UK, in the produce sector, with the ground up vision. I think what I found was that consumers get provenance, particularly from farmer owned brands. And in produce, it's often at farm level that the big ideas flow. In order for us to, to achieve these big ideas in the future, we've got to be prepared to collaborate. We've got to be prepared to bring in skills, perhaps experience, and often even bringing in youth rejuvenates a business. What do I need to embrace on a personal and a, per and a professional level? I need to separate what's urgent from what's important. And what's important is what leaders understand. Leaders inspire via clear and achievable vision. Managers tell people what to do. The big things for my business, the leadership I've got to provide is where, where do I want to take my business? Where do I want to take its products? And how do I get my staff to buy into that? So, provenance and farmer-owned brands. I think we've already said farmer-owned brands can provide greater re uh, resonance of, of provenance. It's often lost in retail. It's something we have to exploit. Our brands and their provenance can convey trust and values. Interestingly, the big messages, health, sustainability, and the environment, for some, they're always key to a purchasing decision. For others, they're just too remote. 
They're just too difficult to get their heads around amidst busy lives. But what I think we can achieve with our brands and the provenance, I'd like to think we can force our retailers to consider at what price they continue to pursue their low-cost agenda. Social media. Now, I don't profess to be an authority on this at all, and it brings me out in a cold sweat whenever I've got to find my Facebook page. Luckily, I have a 10-year-old daughter who's my consultant. <laughs> so, modern day time pressures, our smartphones suggest that traditional shopping habits will feature less. Social media can bring our brands to life. They can also shine a spotlight on our values, the principles by which we make our everyday decisions. This technology is all, it's all out there. It's there for us to exploit. Finally, returning to the revolution. What my scholarships demonstrated most is what I should address as an individual. It's not a quick fix. For as powerful as innovation and brands and the provenance can become to our businesses, they have to be underpinned. And they have to be underpinned by a clear and achievable vision, by our values and by leadership. Thank you very much.